when you look at a city, it's spread out, it's inefficient, it uses a lot of energy waste because buildings are different sizes, there's no plan. The roads wind all over the place. Trolley cars and buses travel at the ground level. They have to stop at every corner, spewing poison gas out the back of the cars. All over the world there's traffic lights, and these cars stop, they're jammed, they louse up the environment. You, the cost of your cities could be saved by designing cities that are cost efficient and more humane. Don't you see your cities have accidents? We have proximity devices so cars can't hit, people can't be burnt in a fire, because everything in the building is fireproof, you need no fire engines. In other words, uh, when you say, why can't we go back to the charming days when we lived in the city and learned to like it? That's why I said, if I go to your house and take out all the electric lights and give you a gas light, and kerosene lamp, you'd like that, if you're brought up with that. But today, you want electric lights. You don't want a kerosene lamp. You don't want a gas lamp. When it blew out, the whole family died in the old days. Did you know that? Because compared to the cities that even Jacques is designing, you are living in the past like they did 3,000 years ago or 300 years ago. The, the direction of the Venus Project is, produce, is to produce a very high standard of living for everyone all over the globe. And if you say you want to maintain these cities that are a tremendous cost in terms of resources and energy, and the health of people with the pollution and the dangerous areas and the very high cost of waste disposal, then you're depriving other people of a higher standard of living. You can get conditioned to anything. Let me ask you. Yeah. Do you have a laptop, sir? I do. Do you have a laptop? Yes, I do. You do? I'm surprised you don't keep a pad. Anyway. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. I have to Hi. leave. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, to Roxanne and Jacko. Can you hold the mic closer to your mouth? We can't quite hear you. Yeah. Okay. So first, just some first, uh, so my first word would be to thank you both, Roxanne and Jack, to actually be in Portugal. I realize it's the first time. Jacques Fresco is visiting our country, so please feel at home. And I hope you enjoy your stay. It's a, it's a privilege for most of us, if not all, to actually meet you here. Now, thank you. Thank you. Um, just two questions, which I'll put in one question, and I hope I get answer to both. It's been over 30 years that your amazing ideas are trying to get some, but to see the light. Um, Fresco, if you look back, um, I'm sure there were moments that maybe you invested time and um, strength in one direction to pull through, and maybe things didn't work out the way you planned, because you were dealing with human beings with different agendas. If there's anything that, that you could tell people to go in particular directions to see your ideas through, what would be your... Um, friendly warning. I mean, is there anything that we should learn from your past experience so that we don't go in the same um, difficult areas or difficult directions? Is there some, some fields that we should avoid? Is there any particular lobby that we should be aiming for? I mean, is there anything that we can learn directly? And just please tell us where not to go and just move forward in a particular direction that maybe over 30 years you've is learned so far. Is there anything so that you can advise from um, your past that you can help people not to make the same mistakes that you might have made and tell, tell them where to go? Because mainly, I believe we're dealing with a mountain of issues that go beyond what people might agree with you or not. And the second part of the question is... Um, One question. I, I haven't people. finished. <laughs> One time. I haven't finished. Uh, I can recommend certain books that are on our website. One is called Tyranny of Words by Stuart Chase. That's one. 
language and thought and action goes into when politicians speak, they say America, blah, 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 blah. War, blah, 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 blah. They don't say anything, just make noises. You should be proud to be a Filipino. Just noise, no information. When a teacher says to a kid, that's wrong, those words have no information. Think about it. When you say to a kid, that's wrong, he doesn't know what's wrong. But if, you, if he spells cat with a K, and you say, very close, we just change the K, except in certain countries where they use K, to a C. And he comes around with the C facing the wrong way, say, much closer, isn't it? It's much closer than spelling it with a K. So you don't ever use language that, that's not what I told you. There's no information in those words. If you say your landing gear is too short, the propeller will hit the ground. Stuff like that is information. Where did I get that from? Years ago, I wanted to know how airplanes fly. Of course, I asked my parents, they didn't know. My relatives, they didn't know. So I went to the library. But this is years of frustration. I wanted to know that very, how can you fly on this thin stuff? And when I got the book, I opened it with great anxiety. I went to the library, it was called the Wright Brothers. And it starts out with, it was a sunny day in May, and Mrs. Orville Wright was hanging clothing on the line. That bothered me, no end. I want to know how planes fly. I didn't want to know about the sunny day in May. That whole book was sunny day in May. Near the end of the book, they killed the pigeon. And they put wires in its wings to keep them out and they moved the wings forward, backward, to find the center of balance. That was information. I had to plow through all that bullshit to get to that one point. So I learned how to read books and scratch the bullshit. And just like if a doctor made a wonderful contribution to medicine, I didn't want to know that he lived in Palos Verdes, he has three children, Janet, Jennifer, Matt Mildred. I didn't want to know that. And the doctor loved to play golf. Who the hell gives a shit? I just want to know what he did. So in the books of the future, they'll tell you what a person did. If you want to know about the guy, that'll be on the bottom. There's so much information in the world today, we cannot afford Sunday day in May. Do you understand that? Now, writers get paid by the amount of books they write, the amount of words they can stick in the book. Well, that's commercial and that takes it away from information. And I had a, I was teaching a course, a five-year course, and the students were learning it in one month. And the principal came up and he said, hey, Jock, this is a five-year course. That means he doesn't give a shit about people. He's just interested in the money. Now, you, to prove that your government doesn't care about you, cigarettes would not be available in any sane society. Cigarettes always, not sometimes, always produce cancer in 15 or 20 years. It takes time. So telling kids not to smoke, we would show movies of a guy dying of choking of cancer. We would show fresh lung tissue that stretches. After you've been smoking for 20 years, it tears when you pull on. We show people gasping for breath, dying of cancer, real film. That's the best way to say no to drugs. Now, what the hell is that? Some pinhead wrote that. The wife of President, what was his name? Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Nancy Reagan says no to drugs. What a stupid woman. That doesn't work. That doesn't do anything. You have so many stupid people in government, powerful people in the Army and Navy. I want to tell you a little bit about President Truman. Oppenheimer and Einstein went to see Truman and they said, now that we have the atom bomb, please don't drop it on Japan. Drop it 30 miles off the coast. Say we have a terrible weapon. We'd rather not use it. Please surrender. And Truman said, I don't want those bums here anymore. And he dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They won't forget that. You killed all these thousands of people in a few seconds. Now, don't you think that's going to have a memory in the, in the race? The Japanese people won't forget that. You drop bombs on cities and burn the people down there. That's not the answer to problems. That's an answer 